somehow the first month I opened my t-shirt store, I did like $4,000 in sales. So I don't know what the profit was on that. Maybe, you know, 1500 to $2,000. And then the second month it went to like almost 10 grand. And then the third mm. month it went to 30, it went to like 30 grand. I don't like, it was insane coming from, you know, being a kid that like didn't have anything. As soon as I saw that 30 grand and, and you know, I think the profit on that was nine or 10 grand, you know, it was like, we're going to Disney world, back up the Brinks truck. Where's my Lambo? Like I was like, we made it. Yo, 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 we're back. Holy Hustle Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. In this video, Carrie Egler, got Carrie Egler from the Print On Demand Playbook Podcast. We're going to be talking about how he built a massive, successful apparel t-shirt business. Really cool. And how he's parlayed that. And what he's really passionate about is helping people grow their business online to create freedom. He's got some amazing courses and coaching that he's doing. And uh, just super excited about this interview. If you enjoy it, do me a favor. And uh, you know what to do. Smash the like button, write a review, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So what's up, Carrie? What's up, Alejandro? How you doing, man? Good, man. Super pumped that you're here. I think the last time is actually the first time that we've ever met was uh, May 2022. That's right. I think that's right. That was with um, um, our mutual friend, Sean Cannell, his Grow With Video Live event. And um, before that, though, my first introduction to you is you're one of the best that I've studied when it comes to doing these online challenges, whether it's a five, seven, three day, 10 day challenges. Those are really popular right now. They work. And um, you crush it. Like you just mentioned before we hit record that you got like over 8,000 people at a new one. Maybe we'll talk about that soon. But uh, tell us a little bit how you got into entrepreneurship and uh, launching this T-shirt business. Man, it's – uh yeah. So it was 20 20- – 16, I believe. And, uh, basically this, the story goes, I had a great career. Like I loved what I was doing. Like I was, I was actually working in retail as self in the cell phone business. And I, I worked my way up to being a manager. And then I started managing like the biggest store in our, in our area. And I had like 15 plus employees in the store and like made good living, really, really enjoyed it. Like it was, it was definitely hard work. You know, I was working a lot of hours, um, really enjoyed it. Thought I was going to like keep going with that company and uh, basically, some employees of mine were kind of doing some shady stuff behind the scenes, and the company held me responsible as the the person in leadership. And so I was let go from the company. Uh, we had a we had our one year old son Calvin, who is seven now, and uh, we didn't have our daughter yet. And they let me go from the company. And we, my wife and I, both were like, we weren't really taught about saving or investing or like any of these things growing up. I mean, I grew up in a single single mother home. Uh, she was a waitress. Like we literally lived off 15 to 20 grand a year as a kid, um, that my mom would make at IHOP, you know, working as a waitress. It's like, we just never knew about money. So we didn't save. And so when I was let go, it was like, I think we had $3,000 in our savings account. And we were like, well, my back was up against the wall. Like we had our house payment, you know, car car payments, uh, one-year-old son, like all all the things. And so, um, I had to figure out what to do next. And randomly I started a t-shirt business online, uh, in the early days of Facebook ads. And, um, I had, I had kind of a mentor who was already doing online business stuff. And, and he's the guy I went to when I was let go, I went to him and I was like, what do I do? You're doing this online business thing. Do I go get a job or do I do online business? And he was like, bring me three ideas. I'll help you decide which one. And I brought him three ideas. One of those was a, was an online t-shirt store. And he was like, do the t-shirt thing. And then, uh, that's what started this whole journey. It's been wild, (laughs) but, uh, I, I, I didn't have like a degree. I didn't have any, any business experience. Really the only like business experience I'd had was that I was managing people in, in cell phones, you know? So that's kind of how I got into this, the long, long answer. No, I love that. And so you you built a successful business and helped a, a lot of other people, build successful t-shirt and apparel businesses. When did you decide to go from selling t-shirts to, man, I, I actually think I can teach and help other people do this as well. Yeah, it was, it was about, um, I think it was about three years in ish, two to two to three years in. And so I was, I was doing t-shirts. I had, I had this brand and you know, I, I, I'd, I'd grown it pretty big, I guess. And, and, and then it kind of crashed down and then 
I kind of had to figure out how to make it work again. Uh, one of the things at that time, just related to what you asked was when the, when I, my t-shirt business kind of, kind of crashed, I couldn't really figure out what was going on. I was trying to figure out how do I resurrect this thing. That's when I really got into investing into like courses and coaching and books and those kind of things like investing into myself because I, I kind of had some, some of that early success and I didn't really know why I had that success. And then when it, crashed and I, I went from like 30 grand a month in my t-shirt business to like two grand a month. I was like, what happened and how do I fix this? And that's kind of when I got into like investing into myself, courses, coaching books, different things like that, was able to kind of get that, that business going again and, and was able to find success with that t-shirt business again. And then a few years later, there were just so many friends and people around, mainly around my church that were asking me, they were like, dude, I hear, I keep hearing you have this t-shirt store and you're doing really well, you know, can you teach me how to do that? Like, how do I do that? And, and it would just became so many people asking me that. And then, and then that same mentor that kind of got me into the t-shirt business thing and helped me, he was also into like this whole funnel movement and like ads and like, you know, sharing your knowledge and, and all those kind of things. And it was really kind of the click funnels and Russell Brunson kind of thing. And I kind of got into that world, started reading some of those, uh, you know, dot-com secrets, expert secrets was kind of coming out at this time. That's what kind of got me into this. And I, I, I realized like I have a lot to share and I, and I really think I could help. I really think I could help others create some time freedom, create some financial freedom, or maybe just a side hustle through t-shirts and apparel. You know, I just really what I did in the beginning, which I don't know that it, this is the way I would do it today, but I, I just opened a Facebook group and I started, I started going live every single week in the Facebook group and uh, just sharing little, little, little snippets of what I learned, you know, the past, three years before that of building the t-shirt business and having all the ups and downs and some of the successes and failures and different things like that. And that's how it grew. And then it was only a couple months after that, when I launched, you know, after opening that Facebook group that I launched my first iteration of what is now shirt school, which is our online course and community for, um, for starting and growing a online apparel business. And now I'm four years into that. And it's like, it's just, my life is, just insane, like completely, completely changed from, from back then for the better. I love it. And you mentioned earlier that you grew up and you weren't taught about money. And so for me, when I made, when I first got a little bit of money, I, I wasn't taught about money. So I spent it. So I, I don't know. Did you, did you have um, wisdom? Did you have friends and mentors when you made that 30 K and went down to two K? Was it a big shock or were you like, Oh, I saved it all. I wish I could say I saved it all. <laughs> but no, no, when I had that, like, I think the month, so it was like, it went like this, like the, somehow the first month I opened my t-shirt store, I did like $4,000 in sales. So I don't know what the profit mm. was on that. Maybe, you know, 1500 to $2,000. And then the second month it went to like almost 10 grand. And then the third month it went to 30, it went to like 30 grand. I don't like, it was insane. And coming from, you know, being a kid that like didn't have anything, you know, being a kid where Christmas would come around and my mom would say, well, I'm getting my tax return in January. Like you got to wait till January to get a couple gifts. You know, that was like, that was the, the childhood that I knew coming from that, never having anything. Like as soon as I saw that 30 grand and, and, you know, I think the profit on that was nine or 10 grand, you know, it was like, we're going to Disney world like back up the Brinks truck. Like, where's my Lambo? Like, I was like, we made it. Like I'm telling my wife, like, we're never going to, we're never going to struggle again, you know? And, and, and that mm. was, couldn't be further from the case. So I did not handle the money well. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons once the business like came down and wasn't doing very well that like, you know, I had to figure it out quickly because I spent it all. <laughs> <laughs> I was not responsible at no, all. No, I, I, I assume that's where you were going to go with it because I think, you know, that, that, that's that's very common for a lot of people. So quick advice, you're making some money, put some money away for two things, your savings and especially your taxes, your taxes. I got sure. in trouble with that one. Okay, you needed to turn it around quickly. What did you do to turn it around? You said you had no money. Did you invest right away? What was your plan of attack coming out of? Because I think there's a lot of people, probably two spots, you know, there's probably one, I need to make something work right now because the economy has really impacted my job or maybe they've been laid off similar to what happened, you know, in your situation. And then two, you know, man, like I, I'm, I'm not consistently seeing the 10k 20k a month that i maybe was a couple of years ago platforms have changed algorithms have changed ios things what did you do in that situation every time i tell this story like i feel like it it sounds so counterintuitive but mm. 
it's been the answer for me through so many like business challenges. And it's simply, I, I went and sought out the, the expertise that I needed, the, the skills that I needed. And you know, what happened was, you know, as the, as my t-shirt brand kind of crashed, I was trying to figure that out. Number one, I, I did what I had to do to provide for the family. I went and drove for Uber, drove for Lyft. You know, I sold things that I didn't need. It was like, it, it was like, I got to keep the lights on, you know, I got to keep diapers on my kids. And so I did what I had to do, but what was counterintuitive was at that time, I, I went back to that mentor and I, and I, and I was like, dude, you kind of got me into this. You were like the online business guru that I've been following. And, and like, you told me I should do this t-shirt business. He didn't have a t-shirt business. He was doing other things. It was just, this is kind of what he told me to do. He was doing online business things. It was like, what do I do to get out of this? What do I do to like get to build this business back? Like, please help me. And I'll, I'll never forget what he told me because it, that's one of the things that just changed my trajectory of my whole life. He was like, Carrie, you're, you're, you're out here trying to do this all on your own. You're, you're, you're watching YouTube videos, trying to follow strategies from 20 different dudes. You know, you're, you're like, you're just trying to figure it out. And he's like, all you have to do is find somebody who's already where you want to be and just follow the path. Like just do what they tell you, you know? And, and it is like that moment of like, oh man. And so I remember, you know, I had a credit card with a little bit of room on it and, and it was like, couple thousand bucks. And I invested into an e-commerce course from, a, from a, from an expert out there. And I'd already been in his Facebook group, kind of following what he was doing a little bit. And it was like, Oh, let me just go all in with this dude. Like, I'm just going to follow what he says to do. And so I bought this e-commerce course. And uh, that's about that time is when I discovered print on demand. That was one of the things that really helped me kind of turn things around, gave me some time freedom back. Print on demand is an amazing, amazing business model. And then I, but I, what I really learned was like, started learning about marketing and how to market your e-commerce products, your e-commerce brand, learned about advertising and how to do that effectively and upsells and like all these different things that that were so valuable. And that's when things just started to, to steadily climb. Like I just, I just followed everything that this dude said. If he said to do it, like I was like, I'm doing it. Again, it was counterintuitive because I didn't have the money. You know what I mean? As like, I didn't have the money to invest into this program, but it was like, it's either this or I go back to a full-time job. I mean, those are my only two options. And, and so I invested in the course. It was tough. I put it on a credit card, but like, <laughs> I wish I could look at the ROI from that couple thousand bucks I invested into that course and what it's produced in my life. Cause it's been insane. And that's what, that's what put me, led me down the path of like, man, anytime I have an issue in business, like I'm seeking out wise counsel, I guess you could say I'm seeking out experts that are, have been, or are where I want to be that can help me get, get on the right track. And it's, 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 uh, shortened the time, the, the path that I've had to have some success so much, uh, masterminds, courses, coaching books, like events, you know, where I met you. Yeah. yeah. And I believe this because, you know, you spent, you know, just being, um, you know, very transparent here. My buddy, Sean Cannell had an event. Alex Ramosi spoke, Gary V spoke, Patrick Peck, David, like who's big, like in the last, that's a, that's a crazy, Dude, just, there was other lineup. amazing speakers. That lineup was just ridiculous. That lineup is insane. And so he had a VIP package or something of that sort. And, um, it wasn't cheap. It was five grand. And, um, we were kind of joking a couple of buddies like, man, like five grand to shake Gary V's hand. You know what I mean? And, and, and so, so, but you had access to that and you, you spent the money and you're right when you were when you were having to drive uber you did what i would say most people wouldn't do is they'd spend the money to find and you said like shorten or collapse the time frame to learn something how long were you driving uber for goodness um i would say at least like maybe 3 months or so like 3 months but but it was like just to be clear like i that i've never hustled that hard in my life like i was i was waking up at five or 6 a.m. I was going mm. until like 9, 10 a.m. on my business, the, on my business, I should be mm. clear, not Uber. I was waking up at like five, 6 a.m. to like maybe 9, 10 a.m. working on the t-shirt business, trying to get it going. Mm. Then, you know, going and maybe selling some stuff, trying to sell a guitar, or like whatever, you know, helping wife <laughs> with stuff, whatever, for a few hours there. And then it was like the Uber time was at night. So it was like, you know, at night from maybe 5 p.m., 6 p.m. till 2, 3 a.m. was like, mm. that's when I was driving for Uber, you know? So the daytime was like, I'm kind of just figuring out how do I hustle some more money? How do I sell some stuff, flip some stuff, you know, anything I could do. So it was like an all day thing of like, hey, our backs are up against the wall. Like we got, like, I have to hustle. And my, my wife was actually pregnant with 
our second, our, wow. our daughter Sage at that time, about a week after I was let go from my job, she found out she was pregnant. So it was like, she was still pregnant at this time. And it was, it was wild. It was wild, but just the hustle, man. So you, you were backing up the brinks. Let's go to Disneyland, Disney world, uh, Lambo. I mean, that was a joke, but like, I didn't, I didn't so you make all this money. And, <laughs> I, yeah, thirty thirty thousand dollars a month, and then you got to drive Uber. How like are you just like yeah, oh, that's just what I got to do for my family, or or like was there some ego hit? Like how did you feel during that time? Where like I actually got to go drive Uber? Yeah, no, I it, honestly, and my wife, my wife and I joke about this, but like that was the absolute worst time of our marriage. We were married for um, eleven mm. years in November, and that Congrats, was the man. that was that was the worst period of like six months or however long that like we've, we've ever had in our marriage. It's so difficult. I felt horrible. I felt, I felt like a complete joke. Like I thought I was like this baller, you know, for a few months, like, and I thought we're going from 30 to 50 and 50 to a hundred and hundred, like we're going to blow it up. And so I was very humbled at that time. And it was, but at the same time, you know, the way, I, the way that I'm wired, I think with how I grew up, just very, very poor, no dad, you know, single mom, living off nothing, welfare, you know, food stamps. Like I saw my mom hustle my whole life. There were time when, times when she worked, when she worked three jobs, you know, just gone all day. I'm, I'm babysitting my brother, my little sister. I was the oldest of three. And um, so I, I watched her hustle and still to this day, you know, she's, she's 54 and she, she's still a waitress. Like she hustles every single day. I guess I learned that from my mom. And so when, when it's kind of interesting, but when times get really, really hard like that, that's when I like come alive. You know, like, mm. like I, in that, in those moments, like I was like, no, like I'm not gonna let my family down. I'm not gonna let my, let my wife down. Like I'll do whatever it takes, you know, to make sure that, that, that we're provided for. And so I kind of went into that mode, like, let's do this, let's figure it out, you know? And so it was very humbling. Yes. It was hit to my ego, all those things. But then I kind of found my footing, like we're going to get out of this, you know? I love that, man. And so how did, you know, you and your wife, you know, it's a very trying time. And, you know, most marriages today end in divorce as a result of, um, of, of finances really. And we've had a couple situations with finances and I would say you had a lot more humility than I did in my twenties because, uh, well, one Uber wasn't, but, but I didn't go work at Subway. I didn't go, you know, yeah. I, I, I had too much pride to go, I, I thought it was beneath me. And looking back now, I, I respect what you did as opposed to, and I would just say anybody's, you know, the, anybody that's watching or listening, like there's, your, your family is so much more important than your pride and, and temporary ego. And it, you know, it was only three months for you. And now you look back, it's like a blip and it's cool. You're telling that story now. And uh, man, I just, I just love that. And I love the story, you know, you're talking about, you know, your mom, it's uh, that you're honoring your mom. I think that's really cool. My mom was a single mom. I'm the oldest. I got a younger sister. And then the youngest is my brother. I had to kind of raise, you know, my mom, I, I don't, I don't think she's ever called in sick ever. And yeah. she uh, had my brother uh, and worked, went to work the next day. Wow. She, she worked two jobs. Uh, she wow. worked two jobs. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, I, I didn't have my dad and, um, you know, so my, my question would be with, to you, cause I think there's a lot of entrepreneurs, man, that they don't, we don't talk about trauma or childhood stuff, especially men as much as I, I, I think we should. Um, how, how, how has not, ha how did not having a dad, how has that impacted you in a good way? And I guess in a, in a bad way, um, as an entrepreneur, man. You're trying to go really deep right here. You're trying to, get, trying to go so deep. Which I, and I only, great, asked, I only asked this because I, I never I never met my dad. I'm, I'm, I talked to him when I was 20. I talked to him again the day before I got married. And then uh, he came back into my life. I have two sisters um, about a year and a half to a couple of years ago. And I might meet him for the first time wow. in, 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 in December. But there's this, and I know God fills voids and, and all that good stuff. He gives you what you need and you got, you know, but I would say there are certain things where I wasn't able to call a dad to fix my tire, to help me fix, I call a dad. Like, what do I do on these tax situation? Call a dad. When, you know what I mean? So it, it has affected me. Just curious, like how it's been for you, man, man, that's, it, it's a great question. I, and I, I don't, I want to, I, I want to get into that. It's just like, it's such a huge can of worms. You know, there's so, there's so many layers to it. But, uh, so my, my parents got divorced when I was eight. Um, and, uh, 
it was very, very abusive. So I, my little brother is six years younger than me. So he's, um, so yeah, he's six years younger than me. I'm 34. So like when I was eight, he was only two. So I still remember, you know, the fights, you know, the, the, the abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse that my dad put my mom through, but also me, my brother doesn't really remember, you know, cause he's two years old. Uh, and, and for some of that, he wasn't even born. So, you know, when my, when my parents finally got like separated for good, which they, they were off again, on again, you know, for, for a long time. And then, um, in 1998, which was, I was nine. They, even after they got divorced, they were like still off and on, off and on. My dad, uh, beat my mom and then threatened to slit my throat and kill me. And I, I called the police <laughs> Great, Like I called the police and the police came and arrested him. And that was like the last time that my mom and dad lived together. And so then from that point on, as I grew up to be an adult, like just had this weird relationship with my dad, you know, like I'd see him from time to time. He, he was very, my whole life, he was addicted to prescription medication was kind of his, his thing. He had a big back surgery, got addicted to it in the nineties sometime. And then was just always trying to get off of it, back on it, off it, back on it. And it, you know, he would really, really abuse it. So saw horrible things from my dad, just had a lot of horrible experiences. And then he, he actually passed away in June this year. My dad passed away and, uh, it's been, no, nah, it's, yeah, it's, it's actually brought a lot of peace. You know, it's brought, it's brought a lot of, I guess I don't like to use the word closure as much, but it, it, uh, the relationship was so fragmented and difficult to, to deal with that. It's like, I'm thankful that I, you know, I, I do believe he's in heaven and, 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 and I'm, I'm thankful that he can rest and be at peace. And, you know, I can find some peace and my family can find some peace because it's just been a, such a tormented, fragmented relationship for 20, 30 years, you know, but, uh, but it, the, the one people, when people ask me the question of like, what did I learn or, or, or how has that shaped me there? There's one big thing I always bring up and it's this, it's, it's when, when I, I remember when I was a kid, you know, saying five, six, eight, nine, ten 10 years old in that time, in that range, I remember watching my dad and always thinking to myself, I will never be like that. I will never be what he is. I'll never, you know, be addicted to alcohol. I'll never get addicted to prescription medication, never beat my wife. I'll never treat my kids the way that he treated us or whatever. I remember thinking that distinctly. And then when I became a teenager, I just, it was almost every day. I always thought I'm not going to be like my dad. So it was like, anytime I was faced with a decision, you know, am I going to go to that party? Am I going to hook up with that girl? Like what, whatever the, you know, whatever the, the, the decision is, am I going to hang out with those people? I always filtered it through like, I can't be like my dad. So am I going to do that? Cause that's, that might be like my dad. And I'm, I'm really, really thankful for that. I'm really thankful that I, I look back on the like the years I've had with my dad and you know most of my life and I'm I'm not resentful to him for all the things he did. Like yeah, they suck and I I hate it for my mom and all these different things, but it's like I'm thankful that I went through those things because they absolutely shaped who I am today. The other thing I'm really thankful for that's kind of not necessarily related to my dad, but I'm sure it's all related is getting plugged into the local church. When I was 15 years old, a youth leader from the local a local church came to my school lunch invited me to church 15 years old i i went to church i actually started playing guitar in the band and i've been there for 20 years this december in that same local church and and i think um i, I don't remember the exact question you asked but one of the things I, I i wanted to 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 talk about in relation to my faith was like when i got plugged in at 15 my dad was not in the picture obviously for for years and the like the youth leaders and like the the leadership that all of a sudden was a part of my life at the church, like changed my entire, like changed my entire life because I found father figures there. Like if I had a flat tire at 16, 17 years old, I'm calling my youth leader like, Hey bro, I'm broke down. They know I don't have a dad, you know, and they're, and they're, they were there for me. And so, um, man, the, the power of the local church and just being plugged in, being planted in the house of the Lord, like you'll, you'll flourish in the courts of our God. Like, man, it's, I, I can't, say enough about just the impact and involvement I've had in the, in the local church for 20 years that have just shaped me, developed me like, yeah, it's so yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's a shout out. Get plugged in, go to church, try to go on a consistent basis. You know, I, I always get nervous with people, especially entrepreneurs that are successful. So entrepreneurs are are built a little bit different. They have different a different weight than like an employee does. My wife's an employee, so I'm not here to say you should be an entrepreneur. And, you know, she's a nurse. She works with one pound babies, you know, um, so she's doing ministry. But when 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 a when an entrepreneur like they have a different weight they have bills they have they have to take care of you know if they have clients have to take make sure they get clients get results or they have coaching clients they have to make sure their coaching clients get results they have to pay their staff and 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 sometimes you know it, it's definitely more in, uh, uh, independent than an employee being dependent on they get paid from someone on a consistent basis so there's a level of weight that I think a, an entrepreneur holds that the local church and especially like being pastored, you know, at some level of being mentored, um, the, the, the entrepreneurs that make me the most nervous are the ones that don't have a, a spiritual father, pastor, mentor in their ear. And um, because that goes somewhere, whether it's porn or adultery or abuse or, or alcohol, drugs, whatever. And so I just quick shout out to Man, get plugged into a, a local church. It'll it'll change your life, man. I, I I think that's a cool story. If I kept talking about it, I'd probably get emotional. I cry all the time, and uh, I, I think it's important, man. I think there's you know there's a lot of fatherless people, and for me, it's been a chip on my shoulder a little bit. You know, kind of a chip on my shoulder. Like I'm not gonna I'm gonna be better type thing. Kind of you were saying, JC JC said it was very interesting. He he called his upbringing. Oprah listened to him. Uh, was interviewing him. And he, she said, what about your, your, you know, growing up in the projects and, you know, the, the gunshots and the friends that have died, blah, blah, blah. He said, I think my upbringing was brilliant. And that kind of put some words to like, I would not be who I am. Mm-hmm. Carrie, you wouldn't be who you are as a result of that happening and doing all the amazing stuff that you're, you're doing. And I, I think you're one of the nicest guys uh, in business around. And so uh, thank you for being vulnerable and um, sharing that and seeing God's hand you know, at 15 to you being plugged in for the last 20 years, I think is powerful in all of that kind of growing the businesses and what you've been able to build. Like, what are you most proud of in what you've done? Man, uh, it's cool that we've already talked a little bit about this because I I actually, um, I wrote down uh, that I'm most proud of, I think how I've been able to bless my mom. Um, mm. man, it's uh, so I just bought her a house last month. <laughs> it's not to come on, bro. Yeah, like Let's like not to. Go. You know, I I hate I hate sounding like oh I'm, I I'm love man. that. No, that but, is a beautiful thing based on context of the story, yeah. bro. That's a beautiful thing. So like in 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 2020, I I bought her I bought her a new car. You know, like like I I, I was when we were it's it, there's always a story with it, but like growing up, there's a story with both of those things, but growing up. We were like, we would go from car to car to car, like every few months, you know, one would like, she would go to the cheap car lot, buy here, pay here. And we get the 20 year old car that she's paying four or $500 a month for. That's like garbage, you know, like just overpaying for everything. And then that car would break down and then she would default on the payments and then go to another buy here, pay here dealer. Like, and we were just going car to car. They were always breaking down. I remember this one time we had like a 90 something Lincoln town car. This is like in the mid two thousands like old, old granny car. And it, and it, and it broke down in the middle of like a busy intersection. You know, I had to jump out of the car with my mom or pushing it out of the intersection. Like this, you know, story after story like that. And so it was like, and I had, you know, I had some success first part of that year in 2020 pandemic hit and online businesses kind of exploded and so many cool things happened for, for me. I know it was a crazy time for the world, but a lot of good, a lot of good stuff happened. And so I got, just bought her a new car. I just paid cash for it, you know? And then a few years later, 2023, um, we're having, we're having the biggest year we've ever had in our business. We've already doubled our revenue from last year, like eight months through the, through the year, which is insane. And so I was like, I've had it on my heart for so many years to buy that. I'm going to buy her a house so that she doesn't have a rent. She doesn't have mortgage payment. Like she lives in an apartment with my little sister. We live in this little tiny apartment here in Tulsa. And so I was like, it's time. Let's do it. I talked to my wife and, and we, we bought her this house and it needed a little fixing up. So I get, I, I bought her the house and I gave her a budget to fix it up. Like I'll pay for everything. Like you just contact, get the contractors. And like, man, I was talking to my wife um, actually this morning before I came in about this. And she was like, she was like, did you know that your mom tells me 
says I love you to me like every single day. Like we're texting and she's like, I love you so much. I love you so much. And she's like, that didn't happen before this year. And, and it wasn't because of the house. It was because when my dad passed away in June of this year, my wife, like just, I wish I could, I don't even have words to say how amazing she was. Like uh, just being there for me, taking care of me, anything I needed, giving me space, giving me time, you know, being encouraging, all those kind of things. And my mom saw that. My mom saw how she, how she took care of me and how she treated me. And my wife was just telling me, she was like, since your dad passed away, your, me and your mom have had just this incredible relationship where she just, she just loves me so much, you know, and I love her. Like she just, she's, we're so close with her. And so I think that's what I'm most proud about because my mom has just had such a rough life and struggled and, you know, but just couldn't ask for a better mom, like took care of me and, and my two younger siblings did whatever it took to, to put food on the table and provide for us. And like, I feel like I owe her more than I could ever give her. And so if that's not the thing I'm most proud of, it's probably, it's definitely at the top of the list. Um, just being able to like give back to her a little bit for everything she's done for me. To me, that's significant. I've always wanted to, I have not done that yet. It's still one of my goals. I've thought about that recently because I, as a kid, you know, I think a lot of sons want to do that. I want to buy you know, you, you see athletes doing this, you know, one of the first checks that they get is buy their mom or a house or a car. And I, I think that's a, a very beautiful thing, man. And so how in the world does someone become that successful to do th that very thing? And so I want to announce it eventually on the podcast that I bought a house and a car for my, Let's my go mom. That's a beautiful thing. Oh, wait, oh, wait. You're a great <laughs> son. <laughs> you're saying you're going to announce it right now. I was like, yeah. No, 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 no. I, I, mom. <laughs> and the sponsor of today's video is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, t-shirt school. Um, so, so, you know, no, you, you built this massive business, man. Like you love courses. You love the freedom that online business brings to so many people. And I think people that go, man, I want to, I want to be proud of something like that too, from, even if it's for my family, bringing my wife home from work, when it, when it comes to growing businesses, whether it's a side hustle or becoming your main hustle your main thing um where do you focus on i mean we talked about investing into yourself but what advice do you have someone hey i'm just getting going or i've been going and it's stuck right now what would you do right now in 2023 and beyond what is the strategies and tactics that you would recommend people use is there something you love doing right now is there a kind of a unique thing or is it is it the basics like what what would you tell folks yeah you know it, it, one thing that comes up is it, it, it kind of depends on obviously what the business model is, right? Like the, the thing that yeah. I, I teach and that I, I'm so passionate and love is, is t-shirts apparel. And really it's just e-commerce, you know, it's physical products. Mm. And that's, yep. that's kind of, that's where I've built a lot of, you know, my own business. And then now I have uh, programs, courses and coaching uh, that where I yeah. serve, I serve t-shirt and apparel brand owners. But then on the other side, um, I, you know, I, I promote my own courses and coaching and all that kind of stuff. And I, I'm so passionate about that as well. And just uh, people that are into the, or that want to share their knowledge, you know, want to share their expertise. Mm. I, I think also it's, it, it, it's a good thing to point out that um, with where college is at, you know, I, I'm kind of, mm. I'm definitely in that, in that wave of like, I don't know if my kids are going to go to college, you know, like mm. I, I went to one year and I just think where colleges are at today, you know, there's so much opportunity to learn skills and, and, and learn, you know, marketing and, and business. And there's so many different avenues that you can do that. Like, you know, anyways, it depends on the business model, but one thing, which is kind of a tactical thing, even though it may not sound like it, but it's something that I'm really passionate about because I see people not doing it so often mm. is this idea of being consistent, this idea of being mm. like, consistently doing one thing over and over. And actually, you know, Alex Hermosi is one of the guys that has kind of impressed this upon me in his content is like, if you just think about it, man, like if you go to the gym right now and you lift a bunch of weights and then you leave and you don't come back for three months, like you had a great workout, but your muscles aren't going to be any bigger. Right? Like, but if you go every day for the next month, even though it's only a month, 
your muscles are probably going to be a little bit bigger. You're going to be feeling stronger after a month. You know what I mean? If you go two, three times a week and you do it for a year, bro, like your body's going to be transformed. You know, like you do it for five years, like you're going to be freaking look like Arnold, you know, like, and it's the same thing with like, it's, it's the same thing with, 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 all, pretty much anything in life is like, how do you get to your goals? It's consistency. So what I would say for online businesses, and this is pretty much, honestly, pretty much any kind of business that you have, the strategy, the tactic is pick one platform, go all in on that platform and do it every day and just, and commit to it for however, however long, really, I would say start with 30 days, but you know, if you can do it for six months, if you can do it for a year, I mean, think you will be shocked at where you're at in one year from now. If you said, I'm going all in on YouTube and I'm going to put out two videos a week for one year, like I can do that for one year. Or if you're in e-commerce, t-shirts, apparel, you say, all right, I'm going to go on Instagram and I'm going to do organic content for one year and I'm going to post every single day. There's no way you don't sell t-shirts, you know, in that year that you don't make sales and like actually grow your business. Like it's just the principles of life is like when you're consistent in one thing and you, you focus and you do it over and over and over, you just get good at it, right? Like the first day you suck, the second day you're better, third day you're a little better, the fourth day you're a little better. And then you look up in three, six months and you're really, really good at it. And I think that that principle has uh, shown itself to be true in, in my business journey over and over and over and over again. Uh, anything I put focus on and do it consistent, consistently over a period of time, I just get better at it. And then I start to see the results from it. That's good. I, I, I think, I don't know if Tony Robbins, I heard it from him. I don't know if he's he come up, it was called Can I, C-A-N-I, uh, -A constant and never ending improvement in, in getting better 1% every yeah. single day. And what happens is those small little, you know, um, notches of, of, of growth, like over time, like they just, it's a massive mm -hmm. gap between where you were and where you are today. So let's talk a little bit about tactically how to become consistent and disclaimer. That was why I started the Holy Hustle podcast is because I feel, you know, like I have something to say and, and I want to, you know, I want to share it with people. And so I am no kidding, no matter what, every single week going to do a post. Now I've got other plans for content, but this was kind of the first step. So when it comes to content right now and consistently posting for those first 30 days, what would your recommendation, what platform would you choose for most people that have an online course or coaching or e -com? Like what platform would you choose and how would you decide what type of content? So maybe give me a, a, a strategy for the next 30 days. Yeah, I think where I would start as a, as you know, new, I guess kind of getting something new off the ground Number one for platform, I think I'm going to give you two, actually, it would either be Instagram or YouTube. Like those are my two favorite platforms. So Instagram, I think as a kind of a blanket for most e-commerce businesses is the best place organically. Like if you have an e-commerce business and you're selling physical products, you probably don't want to be on YouTube. Like that's not really where you're going to, where you're going to find sales. I still think Instagram is the best. I know TikTok is kind of the, the hot thing. It's been the hot thing for the last couple of years. I don't think that we've like, I don't think TikTok has really cracked the code yet. If they even want to crack the code on how to convert people effectively day in and day out to like become a customer. And that's, that's the big thing is like with Instagram, you have your link in bio, you have these stickers, you have you know, the DMs on Instagram are a great place you can sell and you can easily get people into those messaging conversations and different things. On TikTok, you know, you can't message anybody that doesn't follow you, you know, and they, they, they really want you to stay on platform, which is totally understandable, but it, it, it doesn't necessarily benefit the entrepreneur as much, uh, you know, us as business owners. And I love, and I think TikTok's amazing. So, so there's definitely a lot of opportunity there um, on both, you know, on many kinds of businesses, but I think Instagram is like probably the best platform, whether you're like an expert doing courses, coaching, different stuff like that, or, um, or you're on the e-commerce side, um, even like Facebook and Instagram shops on the, on the e-commerce side where you can actually create a shop on Facebook and on Instagram. You can, people can buy on the platform. They're amazing. Like they're, they're really, really good. And, and, and you can get a lot of sales from that. But anyways, to, to back to your question, what would I do for the first 30 days? If I was new, what I would do is I would find 
I'd say five to 10 other people, companies, competitors that are doing well. And I would see exactly what they're doing. And I would just try to replicate that, right? Not, not copying them, but see what kind of topics they're talking about, what kind of posts that they're making, what do they look like? And just looking at that framework and then seeing how you can apply that to your niche, you know, your, your, your uh, content. Because personally, one of the, another thing that I'm kind of passionate about is I think the worst thing in the world for an entrepreneur, the worst situation you can be in is to sit down and look at a blank page and just try to come up with something from scratch. Like I talk about this a lot inside shirt school because when in shirt school, when you're creating an apparel brand, you're always designing, you're always creating new designs. It's like, there's not many people who can sit down and open up Photoshop and a blank canvas and just be like, here's my amazing t-shirt design. Like you need inspiration. You need something to be inspired mm. by. You need a framework. And when it comes to t-shirts, man, you can look at the fonts and the color schemes and the layouts and the styles of successful t-shirt designs. And that gives you that starting point and that inspiration to be able to create your own designs. And so what I would do is I would, I would find five to 10 people maybe in my niche or doing something similar to what I want to do, even if they're not in your niche, if they have kind of a similar business, you know, maybe if you're doing courses, like they don't, it doesn't have to be in your specific niche, but somebody else who's doing, you know, selling courses on things, look at what they're doing, replicate it, do it for 30 days. I would encourage people don't even, don't even analyze it for 30 days. Don't even try to tweak mm. it. Like do a 30 day, 30 day test every single day, post content, after 30 days, then take account of what, what the stats are, all those kind of things. I think it's a, I think our friend Sean Cannell is, it, and this is really stuck with me is he, when he talks about YouTube, he's like, how fast can you get to a hundred videos? Like just, mm, just put out a yeah. hundred videos, right? Like he's like, just press record, get to a hundred videos because you can't even, you can't even look at your YouTube channel and be like, it's a success or not a success until you've gotten to a hundred videos. You know what I mean? And so, um, so that, that, that would probably be my advice. Yeah, I could keep going, but I'll, I'll kind of leave it there. No, I love that consistency. I, I, I think, you know, I have been behind the scenes for so long and it's very fascinating. Anytime I post something, I'll have people like, oh man, I didn't know you did that. And how, how can I find out, learn more about, or like, hey, do you have courses or products or, and, and I, I, I think it's like out of sight, out of mind, recency bias. You know, people have a recency bias towards the thing that they just saw. And part of it, uh, I was just telling a, a buddy of mine, like they, he emails every single day. He emails people every single day. I'm like, well, what if they don't open it? Like, what if they don't know? He's like, but they see me every single day. True. they see. That and name. it's funny because when I look at my emails, there's people that I don't see every day, but I'll always, I always, I'm, they're always top of mind. True. And it's so if we could show up on a consistent basis in front of people and and do it over a course of 30 days, you're going to be probably so shocked at where you're at, at the end of that, that 30 days, man. So on Instagram, are you doing more stories, reels, newsfeed? Like, is there a hack right now? Is there anything you recommend that's cool right now with Instagram? You know, I haven't been super, super consistent as of late on Instagram. Um, I have been more, way more consistent on YouTube and on my podcast. Uh, I've been putting out a lot of content there. One of the things I'm planning... Yeah planning to do here very shortly is really start chopping up those podcasts and getting some of those short clips mm -hmm. out there. But what I've, the thing specifically to Instagram, what I've done most recently is actually uh, w one thing that I got from Ryan Pineda at, at Sean Candle's uh, conference there was um, uh, basically some of that automation stuff, right? Is like posting mm -hmm. a reel and saying, Hey, DM me the word class, which is one that I use or whatever the word is, the word t-shirts to get, you know, a link to, to the class. And that actually actually worked really, really well. Um, and there's something about engaging people in the DMS versus like a sticker, yes. or like link in bio or those kind of things. Yeah. Engaging people in the DMS, man, it's, 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 you create a conversation. So you get to create more of a relationship with, with potential customers, connections. And, uh, and then you also like, there's just that you get more responses. Like you just get more responses than you do like clicks on a sticker or clicks in the link in bio. It's pretty effective just adding in when you do a reel, adding in at the end of there, you know, if you want to, if you want access to blah, 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 whether that's your PDF, your class, your challenge, I need your to do group, that. uh, just DM me the word Facebook and I'll send you a, 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 a link to the group, you know, DM me the word challenge. I'll send you a link to the challenge. It's really effective. I have this, I have this hunch. I'm going to do it. I, I have this hunch. Cause 
you know, when you get more comments on Facebook, the algorithm kind of like, and it just kind of has a snowball effect. I have heard, and I, 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 I think that the more engagement that you do, so it's a dialogue versus just people DMing you. I actually think there's an algorithm like boost to that. I, I think Facebook sees that. I see that they see that you're responding to people, you're being attentive, you're building community. I think they, I think they, I think we reward that if we go, hey, Meta owns Instagram. Meta's all about community. I that's just a hunch. Don't quote me on it. Um, but I think I that's, that's well, bro. Let's talk a little bit about how people can connect with you, man. If they want to learn more about how to how to hire you, get coaching for you, learn about your challenges. Where can people learn more, man? I would love to invite people to go check out the podcast if you're at all interested in e-commerce, in print on demand, yeah. t-shirts, apparel. I have a great podcast called um, Print on Demand Playbook. And it's a print on demand playbook. It's with my buddy, Adrian Von Ark. So we team up and do the so podcast. Cool. Awesome guests on there. Um, outside of that, you know, if you're in more interested in like courses, coaching, different stuff like that, I would probably follow me on Instagram, Carrie Egler. It's kind of okay. weird to spell, but I'm sure I'm sure Alejandro would put it in the uh, show yeah, notes. Yeah, we'll link but, it up. Yeah, Carrie Egler, and then you can also just go to the website, carrieegler.com. That's awesome. We'll link all of that in the show notes. Make sure to give him a follow, connect with him. Literally one of the nicest guys in business, character, integrity. Um, you're, 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 I just, you're, I appreciate you, man. Like you've been so cool with me. Um, I appreciate how open you were. And I, I think you've been a, a great son, man. What a cool moment for you to, to, uh, to do for, for your mom, man. So I, I, appreciate I just that, appreciate you, your friendship, man. And you're, you're, you're the man, bro. Um, okay. So let's travel back in time a little bit. What advice would you give to Carrie? while you're driving wifey's frustrated you're frustrated with her what advice and encouragement would you give carrie while he's driving uber in his lamborghini i don't know what car you had at the time <laughs> you said lambo i thought that was funny it's like a but what advice two, would you like give a what, yeah chrysler 200 it wasn't even a 300 back then yeah um yeah. what 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 uh what advice and encouragement would you give to Carrie in that moment? My wife and I talk about this all the time. Uh, we are so incredibly blessed and cannot like, cannot fathom how we're, we're here and we have like the life that we have. Um, and, and it's pretty simple. Like the, the advice I would give to myself back then was is basically like you cannot fathom where you will be in six or seven years. If you just keep mm -hmm. going, like if you just don't give up, you know, keep, keep pushing ahead. Um, like you won't recognize yourself. You won't recognize your life. You, you, you two, two just phenomenal, beautiful, amazing kids, mm -hmm. a wife that loves me, supports me has, you know, even at my lowest as, as supported the entrepreneurial dream. Like you will not be able to fathom where you'll be at in six to seven years. And that would be my encourage, encouragement to, to, to listeners. Like, God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask or think. And it takes just a commitment from us uh, to be, again, be consistent, continue, whether it's, it's hard or easy, you know, it, man, it's hard sometimes, even when it, even when things are coming easy, just not to get complacent, mm. not to get lazy and just to co continue to be diligent and continue to put in the work and do the things you need to do and show up every day. Like it's, it's hard to do it when you're having success and when you're not having success and so I just think the message for anybody out there and for myself at that time would be you, you cannot imagine where you'll be in five years, 10 years. Uh, if you just, you just continue, you don't give up, keep going. That's powerful, man. Um, edit Sammy here. Um, just so you know, with Riverside carry, you have to like, let it, uh, upload a hundred percent. You probably already know that now. So just anytime out, you have yeah. a guest, just make sure. Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. So then we'll, we'll do that. Um, all right, man. Well, our last question for you, this has been a phenomenal interview. I really appreciate it, man. Um, what is your definition of holy hustle? Yeah, my definition would just be, man, just, just serving God, trusting God through mm. everything that you're doing, man, having that foundation in God, in Christ and, and, and putting everything you do in your business through that, you know, like filtering it mm. through the word, filtering it through your faith. Like, 
um, that would be the holy hustle to me. Come on, Carrie. Appreciate it. This has been, I, I just, I love, I loved our time together. For those that are watching, do me a favor. These type of stories, they just got to get out to more people. So if you um, were blessed, if you got something out of this, do me a huge favor. Give Carrie a follow on Instagram. Make sure to check out what he's up to. But uh, leave a comment, comment on YouTube, um, like it, share it, subscribe, because uh, we got some more amazing um, shows coming up for you. Again, Carrie, love you so much. Thank you for doing this, bro. 